The following video demonstrates that the theory of evolution is useful for making sense out of biological observations. One of the most common misconceptions about evolution concerns the topic of intermediate forms. The claim is all too often made that there are no transitional or intermediate forms in the fossil record. But what does the evidence say? Here's how the National Academy of Sciences answered that question in 1999. So many intermediate forms have been discovered that it is often difficult to identify categorically when the transition occurs from one to another particular species. Actually, nearly all fossils can be regarded as intermediates in some sense. They are life forms that come between the forms that preceded them and those that followed. So, what are we to make of the claim that there are no intermediate forms in the fossil record? As it turns out, those who make the claim are usually harboring fundamental misconceptions about how evolution works. For instance, child star Kirk Cameron has repeatedly argued that the theory of evolution is wrong because no one has ever found fossil evidence of a species that resembles a cross between a crocodile and a duck. Unfortunately for Mr. Cameron, this argument does nothing to disprove modern evolutionary theory. It merely reveals that he does not understand it. Such misunderstandings compel people like Cameron to ignore or fail to recognize the copious examples of intermediate forms that do exist in the fossil record. In order to better understand what evolution actually predicts about intermediate forms, it helps to consider an analogy. Imagine that you are looking at a comprehensive family photo album. There is a picture of you on the first page of the album, a picture of your mother on the next page, your mother's mother on the next page, and so on. As you flip between the first two pages, you can immediately tell that you and your mother are related. You clearly share certain physical characteristics, such as the shape and size of your nose or the color of your hair. As you continue to flip through the album, going back many, many generations, it is quite obvious that the members of any particular generation are related to the next due to their shared physical characteristics. Sometimes you might even find that you share certain traits with some of your distant ancestors, even though these traits seem to have disappeared in the intervening generations. Now let's imagine that, on a whim, you stop flipping through the album and turn back to examine the page with your own photo on it. When you return to the page that you stopped on, it seems like something is wrong. You and the person you're looking at share no obvious similarities. Even though you look nothing alike, you know for certain that this woman is one of your direct ancestors. At some point in this climb down your family tree, your ancestors stop looking like you. Fortunately, you have a complete photographic record of every generation in between, so it is easy for you to observe the transitional stages between this unfamiliar face and your own. Now imagine a family photo album that goes back in time for billions of years. It includes a photo of every single generation in the line of descent that led to you, all the way back to the first living thing. As you quickly flip through the album, going through several strange and unfamiliar intermediate forms along the way, you eventually end up at the common ancestor of all living things. You can still observe a smooth transition between each form, because every photo shows only a small difference from the one that comes before it and after it. Okay, let's make this scenario a little more realistic. All of your ancestors are not in the photo album. A lot of them simply refuse to have their picture taken. For others, the photos are not particularly flattering or informative. Many of the existing photos are damaged or incomplete. Other photos have simply disintegrated over time. The album itself has also suffered significant damage, having been caught outside in stormy weather, singed in house fires, and simply worn out through the constant flipping of pages. Some of the pages of the album may even have been shuffled around or turned upside down as it was passed from one generation to the next. You might even have to perform a little detective work to get some of the photos put back in the correct order. Clearly, this more realistic photo album is still a record of your family history. It's just not as complete as you would like it to be. When you flip through the pages, you occasionally see jumps in the images instead of the smooth transitions like before. For a while, the photos represent one form, but then you come to a gap after which the photos show a different form without a smooth transition in between. Because this is your family photo album, you know that each of these transitions still took place, you just no longer have all of the photos to document each and every intermediate step. Obviously, the fact that you no longer have photos of some of your ancestors does not mean that they never existed, it's just that some of the photos have been lost to the ravages of time. Even so, when you show the album to other people, they can still learn a lot about your family history from the photos that remain, despite the gaps. As you have probably guessed, this realistic photo album represents the true fossil record. 
Due to the fact that fossilization is an extremely rare event, the fossil record could never provide evidence of every single species that ever existed. However, the fossils we do have provide plenty of evidence to tell a very compelling story of the history of our lineage. Moreover, every other existing species also has its own family album, with its own unique story to tell. But it turns out that Kirk Cameron is right in one sense. The theory of evolution does predict that some fossil forms should exhibit a mix of characteristics that link modern organisms to older, very different organisms. Evolution would be falsified if there were no such intermediate forms in the fossil record. But what exactly are these intermediate forms expected to look like? Well, it should now be obvious that each and every fossil in the fossil record represents a species that was fully formed. Indeed, the notion that a species could be anything other than fully formed is utterly meaningless. Every fossil specimen represents a fully evolved species. The misconception here is the idea that a transitional fossil should look half like an ancestor and half like a descendant. As we've just seen, that is not how evolution really works. Evolution primarily occurs by refashioning old features into new ones. Therefore, evolutionary theory predicts that transitional forms should appear as modified versions of pre-existing forms, not as amalgamations of the modern representatives of related groups. Consequently, the reason that we do not find evidence of bizarre animal amalgamations in the fossil record, like Kirk Cameron's crocoduck example, is because such forms could not possibly have evolved. Indeed, the discovery of such a farcical animal in the fossil record would be regarded as evidence against evolution, not for it. Evolution is a powerful theory because it does not merely predict that there will be intermediate forms, it also allows us to predict which intermediate forms should be found and when these forms should have existed. These predictions must be consistent with our current knowledge about evolutionary relationships based on all of the available data sets, including evidence from morphological, genetic, and embryological studies. Once again, evolution could be falsified by the discovery of a fossil that is inconsistent with these other lines of evidence. For example, Evolution predicts intermediate forms between ancient land mammals and whales because the morphological and genetic evidence indicates that whales are the descendants of land mammals. Intermediate forms should therefore exhibit traits that are transitional between these distinct groups. In addition, these intermediate forms should be found to have existed prior to the earliest recognizable modern whales, which show up in the fossil record about 30 million years ago. After decades of digging, such intermediate forms have indeed been discovered, in remarkable abundance and in precisely the order that makes evolutionary sense. Evolution also tells us which intermediate forms should not be found. Despite their superficial similarities, no intermediate forms are predicted between whale sharks and whales. This is because the morphological and genetic evidence indicates that whale sharks and whales are not closely related. The discovery of such a fossil would actually be evidence against evolution. No such anachronistic fossil forms have ever been discovered. So, what have we learned? Well, hopefully you can now understand why scientists do not take seriously the claim that there are no intermediate forms in the fossil record. An honest look at the fossil record consistently confirms several predictions based on evolutionary theory. First, we find that some fossil forms exhibit a mix of intermediate characteristics that link an older group of organisms to a younger group. Second, contrary to the popular misconception, we do not find fossil evidence of organisms that are merely a cross between existing groups. Such a find would actually contradict evolutionary theory. Finally, when we find authentic intermediate forms, they occur in the fossil record precisely when and where they should. To support this last point, in my next video I will present several examples of fossil intermediate forms that were predicted to exist before they were actually discovered. Thus, we will demonstrate the usefulness of evolutionary theory for making sense out of biological observations. I'm Jeremy Mohn. Thanks for watching my video. This video lesson has been brought to you by Stand Up For Real Science, a website devoted to defending the teaching of mainstream science in public school science classrooms. Visit us at www.anevolvingcreation.net slash stand up.